Moving down below, let's use some of our knowledge and see if we can move a little bit quicker. I'm just going to highlight the A value those, and then our factored form. There. So our A value for the first one, 2. Direction of opening, that's a positive, so it opens up. The y-intercept, if we look at the graph, this graph corresponds, is 6. Well, how do those numbers that are highlighted relate? 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6. The vertex, we can see the vertex, negative 2, and in this case, negative 2. The x-intercepts. 1, brackets lie, or what would x be to make that bracket equal 0? So it's x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 3. We think about is it increasing or decreasing? From left to right, it goes downhill first, so it's decreasing when x is less than negative 2, and then it goes uphill, it's increasing from left to right when x is greater than negative 2, or to the right of negative 2. Let's follow the patterns. A value, negative 2. Direction of opening, down. Let's look at the y-intercept. Oh, it's off the graph, but let's see. If we follow that pattern, 2 times 4 is 8, times negative 2 is negative 16. Down here, yeah, there it would be. The vertex, negative 3, 2. We look at our x-intercepts, x is negative 2, and x is negative 4. Our vertex, if this was all shaded out, negative 3 is midway between negative 2 and negative 4. So we're still looking at midpoint, all previous maths still exists. Now it's going opening down, so from left to right it's going uphill, at the vertex it's completely flat, and then it's going downhill. So it's increasing when x is less than negative 3. And then it is decreasing when x is greater than negative 3, or to the right. Third example, there's our a value. It's a negative, so it's opening down. That's what we see on the graph. Again, we have a y-intercept, but there it is. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, times negative half is positive 6. Hey, that matches what we see on the graph. Our vertex, again, the x value is going to be between 2 and negative 6. So if we think about midpoint, those are 8 apart. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So we need to be 4 from the left x-intercept or 4 from the right x-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, there's our axis of symmetry, 2. Because we have it graphed, we can see the vertex is 2, 8. Again, the x-intercepts, look how they combine. We have a negative 6 in brackets, so one of the x-intercepts is positive 6. We have a positive 2, one of the x-intercepts is negative 2. Again, downhill, we're opening down, so we're going uphill. Every one of these points, like that, is increasing. It's going uphill when x is less than Two, and then it goes decreasing once we pass that point in the vertex. So it's decreasing when x is greater than positive 2. Factored form. In factored form, we can find the x-intercepts. We could add them together, divide by 2 to get our axis of symmetry. Use that value to sub in to find our y value, how high or low is a vertex. Our a value relates to opening down or opening up, which tells us increase or decreasing compared to our axis of symmetry or the x value of our vertex. Mind blown. Flip the page. Let's put it all together. So, 
in factored form. Another way to write a quadratic equation, we still have our a value in front, y equals a in brackets x minus r, and then in other brackets x minus s. So we have our x-intercepts. which is also known as a root, or a zero, or a solution. At the same time, we have our vertex, this is where the max or the min is found, again, if it opens up, we have a minimum, an actual bottom, if it opens down, we have a maximum, an actual top. This is where the curve changes from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. Part of that, we also find our axis of symmetry. This is where the parabola is divided into two congruent parts, a mirror image. The left side is a mirror of the right side. The vertex is on this point, and it's written as a line since it is a line. It's a dotted line that goes through, and x is a number, and specifically, that number is the x-coordinate of the vertex. All right, so it's the x-coordinate of the vertex. whereas the maximum and the minimum are going to relate to the y-coordinate of the vertex. We also have the y-intercept, which we know from standard form, and it really still is a point. Zero y. Now, the direction of opening, that has to do with a. If a is greater than zero, which is a fancy way to say positive, it opens up, and if a is less than zero, which is a fancy way to say a negative number, it opens down. The maximum value occurs if a quadratic opens down, right? So if it opens down, there's actually a max. There's the top, and it is the y value of the vertex. If the quadratic opens up, there's an actual bottom, there's a minimum, a minimum value occurs when the quadratic opens up, there's an actual bottom, and again, it is the y value of the vertex. So now we have standard form and we have factored form. They both tell us information, and we will be able to switch between the two with our skills. Flip the page, give some practice, and I'll see you next time.